A lot of great things about Southwest Airlines, but it's been a bad month, you'd have to say. Three weeks ago, a woman was killed when an engine explosion broke a window and sucked her partly outside the plane. Then last week, another cracked window forced an emergency landing in Cleveland. You'd think things would be better on the ground, obviously, but not that much better. A Southwest flight landed safely at Baltimore this morning, only to get rammed by one of Southwest's own trucks. How do you even do that? Well, it's not clear. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. And fortunately for Southwest investors, it's not the only airline having some scares. On Sunday, a JetBlue flight from Puerto Rico to Tampa had to divert to Fort Lauderdale after its windshield cracked. You just pray this is not a sign of something bigger, flakiness, infecting the society. Probably not. But it's always good to be on the lookout for those signs because they can sneak up on you. That's about it tonight for us tonight. Thanks a lot for a great time this hour. We'll be back tomorrow and every night at 8, the show that's the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. Good night from Washington. You know who's next. Great show on Hannity from New York. All right, Tucker. Great show as always. All right. Welcome to Hannity. This is an amazing news night. We'll tell you. We'll break it all down, but we got a lot to cover. All right. So the nuclear deal with Iran, well, that now weighs in the balance. We will have an answer tomorrow. The president said to decide the fate of this very flawed, highly irresponsible agreement. Now, John Kerry, the former secretary of state, is waging a sketchy, unauthorized, illegitimate campaign in order to save this reckless deal he was in part responsible for negotiating. Is he violating the law, the Logan Act? We'll investigate. And also we'll call out Kerry's shadow diplomacy. And we'll show you just why this Obama-era nuclear deal puts the United States and our allies in danger, why it needs to be scrapped immediately. Plus the stonewalling, the obstruction from the Department of Justice is out of control. Jeff Sessions, Rod Rosenstein, other DOJ officials are now actively hindering ongoing congressional investigations. They need to be held responsible. Nobody is above the law. And what are they hiding? And why are they obstructing Congress? We have a full report. And it's safe to say the deep state did not have a good weekend after a federal judge issued what is a stunning rebuke of Mueller's witch hunt and a mitigated judicial beatdown. Another judge after that flatly rejecting a crucial request from Mueller's team. Now, this has been a horrible week for Mueller's witch hunt. Two massive beatdowns for the Office of Special Counsel. We'll show you all of that and the highlights from the judge. And breaking on Friday, FBI lovebird Lisa Page, along with Comey ally James Baker, they resigned from the FBI. Is Peter Strzok next? And also tonight, President Trump picks the head of the CIA. Gina Haspel has reportedly offered to withdraw her nomination after getting lambasted by the left for being too tough on terrorists. We're going to tell you why she's a true American hero. Plus, we'll show you highlights from Melania Trump's Be Best campaign unveiling from earlier today and later breaking news about the liberal New York attorney general who may be in big trouble tonight. But first, a very important breaking news opening monologue. All right, tonight we start with what is shaping up to be a horrible bad five days for Robert Mueller and the Office of Special Counsel. This out-of-control witch hunt just suffered two massive major blows. Now, on Friday, and what was the single biggest beatdown I have ever seen in my life, a federal judge utterly rebuked the special counsel and his investigation, slamming its political motivations and calling out the scope for being way out of bounds and way beyond their mandate. Now, the judge's name is T.S. Ellis III. He told a top Mueller prosecutor, listen to this, watch, you don't really care about Mr. Manafort's bank fraud. Well, the government does. What you really care about is what information Mr. Manafort can give you that would reflect on Mr. Trump or lead to his prosecution or his impeachment or whatever. That's what you're really interested in. Wow. And then Ellis continued, none of that information has anything to do with links or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of Donald Trump. So I don't see what relation this indictment has with anything the special prosecutor is authorized to investigate, because this goes back to 2005. The judge also quoted, quote, it looks to me instead 
that what is happening is that this investigation was underway. It had something, the special prosecutor took it, got indictments, and then in a time-honored practice, which I'm fully familiar with, it exists largely in the drug area. If you get somebody in a conspiracy and get something against them, well, then you can tighten the screws and they will begin to provide information in what you're really interested in. Now, Ellis finished his epic beatdown by saying, well, what we don't want in this country is we don't want anyone with unfettered power. Now, this dressing down wasn't the only legal setback for Team Mueller. On Saturday, yet another federal judge denied the special counsel's request for a delay in its case against Russian election troll farms. And meanwhile, a series of new polls are showing that Mueller's witch hunt is becoming more and more unpopular with you, the American people, all while President Trump's poll numbers continue to climb to his highest levels ever. Now, late Friday, we also learned a former member of Mueller's team of investigators. There she is, FBI lovebird Lisa Page. She has resigned in disgrace months after her viciously anti-Trump text revealed the extreme bias at some of the highest levels of the FBI. And Page wasn't alone in resigning. Another prominent deep state FBI official, longtime Comey ally, James A. Baker, he also resigned late on Friday. So is the deep state now starting to crack? Look, we're learning even more positive news about the Inspector General Michael Horowitz's review of Hillary Clinton's email case. Now, his testimony before Congress has now been post postponed, but for an interesting reason, after reports show there's finding, he's finding new leads in this ongoing investigation. We're going to have all of this and break it all down tonight with Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett, Attorney David Schoen, in just a minute. But first, other news. Iran, that deal weighs in the balance tonight. Remember, three years ago, the Obama administration signed off on what they promised would make the world a better, safer place. In reality, the Iranian nuclear deal sent boatloads of cash, $150 billion worth, to a regime actively plotting to destroy the United States and our best ally, Israel, all while funding terrorism and proxy wars all around the world. Death to America, death to Israel. Now, all told, we sent $1.7 billion in your cash to Iran, then unfroze about $150 billion in assets and loosened a series of sanctions. What did America get in return? Oh, a promise from the Mullers chanting death to America that the rogue Islamic theocracy would temporarily halt its nuclear weapons program. And of course, we knew the Mullers of Iran were liars. And last week, they were proven liars by the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, when he unveiled Iran's secret plans to further their nuclear ambitions, including a project aimed at creating five warheads, each containing a 10 kiloton yield. Now, given these damning recent developments, President Trump is now set to decide the fate of this agreement tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific. Let us be clear. The mullahs of Iran are not good people. They've killed Americans in Iraq. They fought proxy wars. They want death to Israel and death to America. You cannot trust people like this. This agreement does not sufficiently check their nuclear weapons programs. But none of that seems to matter to former Secretary of State John Kerry, because this deal was the shining jewel of his time in the Obama State Department. And he is reportedly pulling out all the stops to save this horrific deal which puts the world in danger, including meeting with Iran's foreign minister, really? And other foreign officials from Germany and France and the EU who were involved in the agreement? This kind of shadow diplomacy? It undermines the United States on the world stage. It undermines our commander in chief. And it needs to stop. Now, the president tweeted this, quote, the U.S. does not need John Kerry's possibly illegal shadow diplomacy on the very badly negotiated Iran deal. He was the one that created this mess in the first place. Kerry's spokesman responded in part, quote, Secretary Kerry stays in touch with his former counterparts around the world, just like every previous secretary of state. Uh, of course, but this reveals yet what? Another standard in our two-tier justice system. Let me remind you, remember the former acting attorney general, Sally Yates, she told Congress that General Michael Flynn was being investigated in part over Logan Act violations after he spoke with a Russian ambassador, his soon-to-be counterpart, during President Trump's transition. I repeat, 
during the transition. Flynn was preparing to take over as national security advisor. But there's no Logan Act violation for John Kerry? Okay, where are the agents in the FBI and the DOJ breaking down John Kerry's door? Another blatant example of a two-tier justice system, sadly, in this country today. Now, we will have full analysis of this incredibly flawed Iran deal and John Kerry's unauthorized actions. We'll ask the question tonight, it, did John Kerry violate the law? All right, but first, the obstruction and stonewalling from our Department of Justice has now reached a fever pitch. Thousands upon thousands of documents that have been requested and subpoenaed by the House Judiciary Committee, by the House Oversight Committee, by the House Intel Committee, are still being slow walked and withheld or massively redacted in what is a clear effort to impair the constitutional right and duty of Congress to check the DOJ and the executive branch. Now, the Intel Committee Chairman, Devin Nunes, who will join us in a second, he is now actively encouraging fellow lawmakers to hold the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, in contempt of Congress. Earlier today, Sessions responded. Let's take a look. The Department of Justice has written him a letter and responded uh, as re uh, appropriate to him. Uh, the request he made is one that the intelligence communities and the uh, uh, Department of Justice feels is, is not uh, grantable. We've explained that we'd like, we'd be willing to talk to him about it before, uh, the details of which I couldn't uh, discuss. Mr. Attorney General, I say this with all respect. Where is your urgency? You need to do your job. This has gone on way too long. These are legitimate, important requests. You are not impervious, nor the DOJ impervious, to the rule of law and our federal system of co-equal branches of power and checks and balances. This is within their congressional authority, constitutional authority. And the DOJ is clearly stonewalling to prevent further embarrassment given their pathetic track record in Hillary Clinton's email case. The rampant potential, we know, FISA abuses. The ongoing witch hunt into Trump-Russia collusion, which never happened. Now, if the Attorney General does not take significant measures to find urgency and speed up the delivery of these requested for months and even years of unredacted documents, then it is time for Sessions, Rosenstein, and anyone else who is obstructing Congress's investigation to be held in contempt and face the serious legal consequences associated with it. In other words, Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Deputy Attorney General, it's time to decide, are you part of the swamp? Are you part of the deep state? Are you going to fix our justice system and let Congress do their job? This country has a constitution. Again, separation of powers, co-equal branches of government. Congress has a constitutional role in oversight. Stop obstructing and slow walking them. Now let's turn to what might be the most insane display of left-wing lunacy in a very long time. Now President Trump has picked Gina Haspel to lead the CIA. Now over the weekend she actually offered to withdraw her name from consideration. A bad idea. She has faced a firestorm of criticism, only from Democrats and the mainstream media because they're corrupt. But get this, she's being criticized for being too tough on terrorists. Mm, I actually like people that are tough on terrorists. Take a look. In 2002, she ran a secret CIA prison for suspected terrorists in Thailand that used harsh interrogation tactics, including waterboarding, sleep deprivation, even squeezing detainees into coffins. You have questions from the left and the right on uh, her role in the enhanced interrogation techniques, uh, her role in potentially destroying the videotapes uh, of the torture, and uh, she's going to have a tough hearing on Wednesday. At this moment, Donald Trump is effectively asking the U.S. Senate to promote torture because Trump is asking the Senate to promote a U.S. official involved in torture to run the CIA, nominating Gina Haspel, Mike Pompeo's deputy, for the job. Excuse me, Harsh, do you know what Gitmo, you the taxpayers, paid for a soccer field for those involved in engaging and killing Americans? And we p took care of every dietary concern. And we treated, there were only three people that were waterboarded. 
Now, President Trump rightly is not backing down to this ridiculous criticism. He reportedly has pushed Haspel to stay the course. I say the same thing tonight. Haspel's confirmation hearing will take place this week, and rightfully so. I met Gina Haspel once. She is a patriot. She loves her country. She has worked hard to protect the American people. She more than deserves this job. And I'll take it a step further. We should all thank God for the people like Gina Haspel and the important work they did after 9-11 to keep this country safe and save American lives. Only three people ever waterboarded. One of them, oh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, another former high-ranking CIA official, remember Jose Rodriguez, on this very show said, no waterboarding, we wouldn't have found Osama bin Laden's courier, and we wouldn't have gotten bin Laden. Thank you, Gina Haspel, for being a hero. And finally tonight, some more good news from the Trump administration, this time from the First Lady. Amazing day today. Earlier, Melania Trump unveiled her brand new initiative. It's called Be Best. Now, the program focuses on America's children, the hard issues that they face on a daily basis. Now, the three pillars of the plan include physical, mental well-being, being, social media use, and ramifications for opioid abuse. Here's what the First Lady had to say earlier today. I feel strongly that as adults, we can and should be best at educating our children about the importance of a healthy and balanced life. So today, I'm very excited to announce Be Best, an awareness campaign dedicated to the most valuable and fragile among us, our children. It's amazing. Melania Trump, she speaks five languages. English is her fifth language. An amazing initiative, and she deserves a lot of credit. Now, we'll bring you updates of the program over the next several months, because right here on Hannity, we actually show the full picture of the Trump administration, like all the success that the media will never tell you about. All right, we have a lot of ground to cover tonight. Joining us first, we begin with Devin Nunes. He is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. He's a California congressman. Congressman, you say that you will move to hold the Attorney General of the United States in to answer Congress's subpoena and how that is the constitutional role of Congress. Well, thanks, Sean. First of all, you don't have enough time left on your show in order for me to get to all of the stonewalling that DOJ and FBI have done throughout our investigation. Uh, let's just maybe pick a few at the top. Uh, just last week, after six weeks, uh, we discovered that for the first time, the American people now know that James Comey uh, testified before Congress that he was not, uh, that, that, that the FBI agents that interviewed Flynn didn't think he was lying. It took us six weeks for the FBI and DOJ to get rid of those redactions. That was finally released late on a Friday night. If you go back to the things that they've dealt with, if you look at uh, with Fusion GPS and getting documents that were pertinent for that, uh, for that fight, uh, that's just another good example of you know, the, the fact that we weren't able to figure out that the FBI and DOJ actually knew that the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee had paid for the dirt on How long the, did they know that, sir? Campaign. Because we didn't find out if I'm correct for a year later. Uh, well, look, we believe that they knew it. Uh, they knew it basically from the very beginning. Well, that would mean they knew that Clinton paid for it when they made the FISA application and they never verified the Clinton dossier by a foreign agent by citing unverified Russian sources. They knew all of this. Did they lie to a FISA judge? Well, they they know things. Here's the funny thing is that they know things. They they know things that aren't true like the fact that James Comey testified and even said on Brett Baer's show that Republicans had started the dossier. So that wasn't true. Now, what is true is, is that the Democratic Committee uh, and the Hillary Clinton campaign paid for the dirt, but of course, Mr. Comey didn't tell that to Congress. So now, he let's lied, get to because Christopher Steele was not brought in. I saw that interview. He was not brought in until Hillary started paying that bill, correct? Uh, well, we don't know. He had been a, I think he had been a source before, or he had been affiliated, but the bottom line is, is that at this, about the same time the FBI started getting information, at the same time the DNC was paying Mr. Steele. So we know what? that much. So yeah. now we get to, so let's get to where we're at today. Uh, we sent a letter two weeks ago to the Department of Justice, a classified letter. Uh, they ignored that letter. We had to then issue a subpoena last week. We issued a subpoena. Then finally on Thursday, they got back to us and said they weren't going to comply with the subpoena. Uh, now over the course of the last few days, they continue to leak ridiculous stories, leak, leak stories of classified meetings that occurred at the White House 
uh, that, quite frankly, some of us weren't even aware of these meetings, but they're coming to us with accusations that clearly had to have been leaked by the Department of Justice and the FBI. How so soon these will you guys hold never Jeff learned. Sessions in, in contempt? Uh, look, as far as so I want to talk to Mr. Sessions. So he so the Attorney General Sessions said today that he wants to, to discuss things. That's good. I want to talk to him. Uh, I actually don't believe that Mr. Sessions saw my letter. I really don't. I don't think the attorney general saw it. So then we had to move to the subpoena, which I'm sure he found out about that. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's in charge there. I think there's enough information now that the attorney that, that's out there now between what you saw in the court that you had in your monologue on Friday. Wow. I think the attorney general should. I mean, at some point, the recusal I've always gets ridiculous. I am. I am befuddled and bewildered where the look, for example, you know, there's a, a great piece by Andrew McCarthy. Why all the secrecy? Outrageous redactions to the Russia report. Rob Rosenstein, up to the final minute, we would never have gotten the Nunes memo or the Grassley-Graham report about FISA abuse because Rob Rosenstein, according to my sources, was begging Paul Ryan not to hand that information that you subpoenaed uh, way in advance, and he waited to the last hour to hand it over. Why is Rod Rosenstein doing this? Why are they now, the FBI, refusing to pursue the personal struck page text when we know there are gaps missing in that? And at what point do we see this an obstruction case? Well, I, I agree with you that they, they should just stop digging. I don't know what's going on in their minds. I mean, there's enough information out there now. They should know that what's occurred here now was, was, was inappropriate. They know that they can't investigate themselves. And so, you know, if you want to actually get to solving the problem, just stop making the problem worse. What give did us you the think? information in a, in a timely manner. I mean, just give us all the information. Just give it to us so that the investigators that have the oversight role can properly go through everything. But when they, the more that they spread this out bit by bit by bit, the more ridiculous they look and the more dishonest they look and the more corrupt uh, sure. it looks to the American people. If I've been wrong, you, I know you follow the show. Is there, I only have 20 seconds. Is there anything I've been wrong about on this show? Because it now seems that everything is, is now falling into place, and we see what's happening. And Rod Rosenstein said the Justice Department won't be re, re extorted. Last word, you have about 20 seconds. Yeah, that's uh, that statement was totally ridiculous. They just need to give us the documents, Sean. Look, this is going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. There's a lot more information out there that the American public have deserves been wrong? a right to know. And you have not been wrong on anything that I've seen. But you're, but the, you know what your challenge is? You haven't seen all the information, and you it's have worse. a right to see it. And it's worse. Unbelievable. All right, sir. Thank you for the good work you're doing to be transparent with the, ma the American people. When we come back, a major enemy of the president who is in serious trouble. And Sarah Carter, David Schoen, Greg Jarrett, new information, and Sebastian Gorka. Straight ahead. A longtime enemy of President Trump, the New York Attorney General, his name is Eric Schneiderman, is possibly in serious trouble tonight. Joining us now from our West Coast newsroom with more on this breaking news, Fox News is Trace Gallagher. Wow, this is blowing up fast. It is indeed, Sean. Of the four women now accusing New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman of sexual misconduct, two have publicly identified themselves, two have not. But they all paint a similar portrait of a man who they claim drinks heavily and engages in physical and mental abuse. One of the women describes being in Schneiderman's Upper West Side apartment in Manhattan following a night out, saying he backed her up to the bed and, quote, all of a sudden he just slapped me, open-handed and with great force across the face, landing the blow directly onto my ear. Schneiderman has now responded, quoting again, in the privacy of intimate relationships, I have engaged in role playing and other consensual sexual activity. I have not assaulted anyone. But all of the accusers deny any role playing or games. A Sri Lankan woman says the attorney general called her his, quote, brown slave and wanted her to call him master. Schneiderman's ex-wife, Jennifer Cunningham, says the allegations are completely inconsistent with the man she knows, but it's worth noting that in 2013, Donald Trump tweeted, quoting again, Wiener is gone, Spitzer is gone, next will be lightweight AG Eric Schneiderman. Is he a crook? Wait and see. Worse than Spitzer or Wiener. And last year when Schneiderman sued the Weinstein Company for not protecting employees from the alleged abuse of Harvey Weinstein, Schneiderman made it clear that intimidation and threats of violence would not be tolerated. Now New York Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo 
is calling for Schneiderman to resign. Sean. All right, Trace Gallagher in our L.A. Bureau tonight. Joining us now with more reaction to my opening monologue, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, civil rights criminal defense attorney David Schoen, the author of the upcoming book. I love this book. I've seen a lot of it. The Russian hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. I love the title of that book. Thank you. Um, okay. Wow. Cuomo wants this attorney general out. Donald Trump tweeted that in 2013. Wiener, Spitzer, yeah. Schneiderman. He, he must have known something, and maybe it was something else and not this. But, you know, Schneiderman's excuse seems to out. be that uh, this was it's just rough now. sex, and I never crossed the line into assault. Well, that doesn't seem to be what these accusers are now saying. Schneiderman's finished. He just doesn't know it yet. I, I'm looking at the cover, uh, the headline on Drudge. Uh, I've got so much ground to cover tonight. Let me go to the contempt issue uh, that we just spoke with Devin Nunes about. David Schoen, let's get your take on that. Well, it's, it's the government working uh, for Congressman Nunez to, uh, to go forward with this. Um, look, we risk a constitutional crisis here, but not the kind of constitutional crisis Senator Schumer and others have talked about. When we have a rogue special prosecutor run amok, when we have a Justice Department not responding to legitimate concerns from the Article I body, Congress, um, we risk a constitutional crisis. There must be cooperation, and I'm sorry if it has to come to contempt. I think we maybe need to look to uh, changing people in positions. Either they do their job now, this has gone on for well over a year. This is Jason Chapitz who will join us later. He was asking for this information. Uh, Sarah, I have read all 50 pages of what happened in the Manafort case. Well, now four times. I've read <laughs> it all four times. I showed our audience just the highlights. This was the biggest judicial beatdown I used to read Scalia and his scathing dissents. This is a far bigger beatdown to Robert Mueller or Andrew Weissman, who we warned people about, was the lead attorney in the courtroom that day, though not arguing for the special counsel. Uh, it's huge, and I think he taught everyone a lesson in what happens here in the expanse of powers. And, he, and Judge Ellis is basically saying, you don't have full authority here. You cannot expand your powers to this extent. He also reprimanded Rosenstein and the others for giving them a 75% redacted memo. I mean, he couldn't even see what the expanse of powers were for Special Counsel Mueller. He said, I want this memo unredacted. I want it here in my office. I want it my hands. I can't understand. And, and what was even more interesting, Sean, was how they refused to answer the judge's questions. Every time he would ask them, you know, he would say, this has nothing to do with Russia. Answer collusion. my questions. Answer my questions. And they refused to answer the judge's questions. I think Mueller is in a world of hurt right now. I think he's in a world of hurt in other parts of this case. And I think he knows it. And I think that right now what we're going to see is an unraveling of this that is going to be uh, uh, potentially change the whole course me, of this investigation. You've read a lot of cases throughout your career. Sure. You've been involved in a lot of cases in your career. I've read a lot of court transcripts. I've never seen anything like this. this it, was, it, it was a withering examination of Mueller and his team, and it was gratifying to actually see the judge pierce the veil of the sham that Mueller has perpetrated because Mueller's only authority is to investigate Trump Russian collusion and any evidence arising therefrom. Well the charges to against Manafort this, didn't arise there to from put the screws to them. Right. So basically they only charged them as right. this is two thousand and five to get him to sing. To get and he used the word sing. Get him to sing. Right. And but be careful he may compose what does compose mean? He'll say anything to get out it's of trouble. It's suborning perjury, and prosecutors do it all the time. They get witnesses to lie because they threaten those witnesses. Mueller went into the archives of the DOJ and dug up an old, decade-old case. Because they want to put the screws to Manafort. That is this, and they, this to was go a, after Trump. This was disposed of. They weren't investigating this anymore. This was right. 2005. And the judge is essentially saying to Mueller, where's your authority? You don't have any authority. And David... The, the judge kept saying, there's no mandate here. This is not part of the right. mandate. And the dates mean something. They, were, they literally raided this guy's home in the early morning, and then they got permission from Rosenstein. It was the 26th of July on the raid. It was August 6th when 
Rosenstein expands the mandate. Sorry, wrong order. That's not how it works. You have identified a huge development in this case. This is a judge universally respected, brilliant academic credentials who had his eye on the ball. He's not a political actor. He's a judge doing what a judge does. He held their feet to the fire. He pointed out the exact regulation at issue here, section 600.4, what the authority is of the special counsel and what it is not, and they had no answer All for right, him. Last word, this, Sarah, by the way. And I got a quick question. Last word, sorry. I don't mean oh, well, to rush everybody. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, David has a wonderful point there. I think we're going to see a lot more developments in the upcoming future. And remember, once again, I stress Horowitz's report's going to be coming out, and he's found when? more and more evidence. When? Well, we know it's been delayed, but I guarantee you it's going to be out All within right, the I next three weeks. Did John Kerry violate the Logan Act? Absolutely. David, did he violate absolutely. the Logan Act? Absolutely. Yes. No question about it. Okay. It's the definition of every factor. Look at what they said about Michael Flynn. This is so far worse. That's right. Uh, let's see when that investigation begins. All right. We have a lot more breaking news tonight. Jason Chavitz knows a thing or two about being uh, delayed and redactions and not handing over documents. He and Dan Bongino are next. Busy News Night. Stay with us. All right, joining us now, Fox News contributor Jason Chavitz and NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. You just saw Devin Nunes, Congressman. How far back were you subpoenaing these documents? Uh, I believe it was September of 2016. It's been that long. Uh, there have been a series of letters and requests, but actual subpoenas. But kind of, the Department of Justice doesn't care. They, they, if they issue a subpoena, you better comply or they're going to go take you to court. But if Congress issues one, they're just like, yeah, whatever. Fortunately, Nunes has got some guts and some political capital that he's willing to spend with his own political leadership. He's got people like Gowdy, Radcliffe, Meadows, Jordan, DeSantis behind him to help support him. But other than that, that you know, that's the front line. And Den Devin's leading but the they're, but, they're, but they're not handing it over. They're not cooperating. They're obstructing. Yeah. They're putting yeah. in, oh, national security concerns that are non-existent, like James Comey's embarrassment last week. You know what? That, they didn't want that exposed. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this Dan Bongino, and I'm saying, you know what? The American people have a right to know. Congress has constitutional authority. Uh, I'll quote the judge in the Manafort case. Nobody wants any one, one branch of government to have unfettered power. You know, people like Devin Nunes are doing their job, but they're not letting them do their job. What is the yeah. attorney general doing? And if he won't do his job, he needs to go. You know, Sean, um, sadly, there are elements within the DOJ that are running right now their own personal star chamber. Um, it seems to be a rogue operation. Um, I don't think they understand that they're not running an independent agency. Let me give you just a quick example. It's now clear that the unredacted redactions about the Flynn interview, where Comey had acknowledged, uh, uh, by the way, against what he said in other interviews, that Flynn wasn't being dishonest, that that was strictly a cosmetic redaction meant to not uh, embarrass the DOJ. It had nothing to do with, as we'd say in the government, operational security or OPSEC. It had everything to do with CYA. Cover your caboose. That's all it was. This was not OPEC. It's nonsense. It, it, it's all nonsense. I have here these 50 pages. Whoops, let me see if I can get it in. This is the 50 pages. I've read it four times. Congressman Nunes, this is the biggest freaking judicial beatdown. If I'm Robert Mueller, I am humiliated over what this judge rightly analyzed here. They're putting the screws to Manafort. They went back to 2005 to do it. It has nothing to do with Russia but the Ukraine. And they're doing it to make Manafort sing or compose, which means suborn perjury and make up a story to get out of trouble. What, what, what's happened yeah, to the hey, country, look, Congressman? Uh, look, thank goodness for uh, Judge Ellis, who's putting it in place. And we'll see. The end of next week, they got to come up with this scope memo. And I love that the judge just said, look, you don't get to make that decision. You don't get to redact things. I'm the judge. I get to make these redactions. He was appointed by President Reagan. He's a tough judge. We uh, hope he holds the line. But as it comes to, I liked Senator Sessions. 
But Attorney General Sessions, he's there in name only. He's absolutely worthless. It is a rudderless Department of Justice. And isn't it and Rod until Rosenstein that, happens, that is the we're one? We're going to have this problem. Isn't he conflicted as it relates to he said fire Comey? Isn't he yes. the one that signed one of the FISA renewal applications? Isn't he? When the, by the way, the judge on Friday said, oh, isn't he recused? He didn't say that by accident, Dan Bongino. Sean, Rosenstein not only signed one of the FISA warrants against supposed super spy Carter Page, who manages to go out on cable every night and talk about whatever he wants, he was also the uh, United States attorney on the Uranium One precursor case. Sean, this is the most conflicted investigative team I've seen in my life. There are two uh, investigators on the Mueller team, lawyers, that represented people involved with the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton scandal. What and about the IG report? Trump. I, I got to ask you, Congressman Chaffetz, all right, I heard it was coming in April. I heard it was coming in May. I heard it was coming yeah. yesterday. Okay, I know he's got new evidence. When are we getting this report? How long does it take to investigate the Clinton email investigation? Because then he's got to move on to the FISA abuse investigation and corruption there. Yeah, fortunately, he's got 450 people working with him, so they can walk and chew gum as well. They're in the final stages. I believe they're getting the security clearances. You have to have it cleared by the uh, uh, intelligence uh, community. Uh, then you're going to bump into Memorial Day, but I really think that first week back after Memorial Day, you're going to see that congressional hearing. It'll be before the Oversight Committee with, Chair, with uh, right. Trey Gowdy as the chairman. I, I, the American people... We have been right. Congressman Nunes, have I been wrong on my analysis in this? Has the media been wrong about Trump-Russia collusion? No. <laughs> Nunes has been spot on. Spot and, uh, on. There's, I, you're laying it out every night. Yeah. Dan, do you agree? Yes, Sean, I think you've been right. I think the real scandal, though, is going to be the intelligence back channel through the bureaucracy, not through the intel community, to try to take down Trump. It's try to take down and sabotage Trump and literally cover and rig an investigation for Hillary in the United States and FISA abuse and spying on Americans and lying to FISA court judges, we better not become Venezuela. That's how serious this all is becoming. All right, still to come tonight, the president has a big decision. He'll announce it tomorrow on the Iranian nuclear deal. Ed Henry has the latest out of Washington. Then analysis, Sebastian Gorka, Daniel Hoppus. Stay with us, a lot of news. This is a Fox News alert. Long time Donald Trump nemesis, the New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman has just resigned from office over multiple allegations of serious sexual abuse. We'll have more on this in a moment, but first with more on the president's upcoming decision. Big day tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific. Ed Henry, the Iranian deal is up. I, if I had to bet, I'd say it's over. That's right, Sean. At least that's the way the president appears to be leaning. Remember, as a candidate, he called this deal a disaster, uh, negotiated by then-President Barack Obama, and vowed that if he was elected, he would rip up the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, what some people are speculating about tonight is the possibility that maybe the president throws a bone to our European allies by having either a caveat that says they have, say, a 30-day window to try to negotiate a tougher deal, uh, or at least something that exempts European allies like France and Germany from some of the tough new sanctions it looks like the president is about to institute on Iran. All of this, of course, coming just days after the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had put out some new intelligence about Iran's nuclear ambitions. And by the way, there are new reports out of Israel today suggesting Iran is planning to further destabilize the Mideast by planning to attack Israel as retaliation for their strikes on Syria in April, which killed seven Iranian military advisors. That may help explain why the Iranian president, you could see him there, was so aggressive this week in trying to save the nuclear deal. He wants the status quo in place. Today, the British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson was in Washington following on trips from French and German leaders who, as you know, were at the White House recently. He met with Vice President Mike Pence as well as the National Security Advisor John Bolton trying to lobby with the idea of what I mentioned, maybe a window here, uh, a caveat, so the European allies can try to negotiate a tougher deal that could keep the president in. But Rudy Giuliani took some time out this weekend from serving as the president's lead attorney on the Russia probe to attend a conference here in Washington on the Iranian issue. And he suggested the president is about to take a hard line. 
We've got a president who's tough, a president who doesn't listen to the people who are naysayers, and a president that is as committed to regime change as we are. Meanwhile, Republicans on the Hill are signaling tonight they may have the votes to get confirmation for Gina Haspel as the next CIA director. She still has to get through a confirmation hearing as early as Wednesday. Administration officials had quietly gone over to CIA headquarters on Friday to talk her out of pulling out. She was concerned about Democratic attacks, about her support previously for harsh well, interrogation techniques. Bottom line is, there are a lot of people here at the White House who hope that Democrats try to block this nomination by the, in the idea that she's been too tough on terrorists. They want to they wanna run on that in the midterm, Sean. All right, Ed Henry at the White House tonight. And joining us now, Fox News National Security Strategist Sebastian Gorka, retired CIA Senior Intelligence Officer, Sonoran Policy Group, Vice President Daniel Hoffman. Um, number one, Gina Haspel is an American hero. And those that have smeared and slandered her, we don't get the courier without KSM being waterboarded, and we don't get bin Laden. So this slander has to stop. She would be a great CIA director, Mr. Hoffman. I couldn't agree more. I served with Gina for many years. I think very highly of her. She's got a tremendously high level of intellectual honesty and integrity and dedication to our mission. Uh, the people at the agency think the world of her. She's had all the experience. And listen, for the past 15 months, she's been deputy director. That's a tremendous audition for this administration. They know what they're getting. We do, too. Um, she's the right choice, and I, I just hope that the Congress does the right thing and confirms yeah. her. Dr. Gork, I know Ed Henry just reported that maybe the president wants to throw a bone to our allies. The one thing people don't seem to understand about President Trump, he keeps his promises. <laughs> he keeps them all. I expect, I I, look, I don't have a crystal ball. I have no insight. My guess, he pulls us out of that horrific deal, and John Kerry's conduct has been despicable and disgusting, and we had two lawyers tonight say he violated the Logan Act. Yeah, this is, um, I know it's shocking for most people that this is a, a politician who keeps his promises, but that is Donald Trump. He's wanted to kill the Iran deal for two years now. Uh, I expect there's not going to be uh, any pulled punches tomorrow. We've had basically eight years under Obama of what? Treating our enemies like Iran as friends. Bribery and, of, and, of dictators and among Sean, us. Sean, it was very easy. For eight years, our enemies were treated as friends, like Iran, given boatloads of cash. And our friends, like Israel, were treated as enemies. That has all stopped. We're moving the embassy to Jerusalem. We're recognizing it as the capital of the eternal state of Israel. And the Iran deal has to be killed. It has to be shot in the head because it is bad for America, it's bad for the world, and it's bad for our friends. Well said. You know, with all the talk about foreign interference in elections, we all forget... Daniel Hoffman, we all forget that Obama tried to work hard to defeat Benjamin Netanyahu, the person with more moral clarity, with more strength on the world stage than any other leader besides now Donald Trump. Well, yeah, and let me just add one more point about the Iran deal. Look, it's a highly flawed deal, as we all know. Um, Iran is technically complying with the deal, but the challenge for our administration is uh, having been left with this... Um, Look at the intelligence. This. Look what we learned last week from Prime Minister Netanyahu. Absolutely. That's, and, that's the, and the challenge, though, is we don't, the other signatories to the deal, they don't agree with us. Russia and China are not going to support us. Russia is building a nuclear power plant in Bushir. Uh, the, the French have major economic interests. This is going to be a real diplomatic challenge for our administration. I would just highlight as well a challenge I've for our intelligence run. community, collect the intelligence on Iran's intentions if little, we do terminate the deal, as little well as rocket for our military man. to make it clear that we are going I to launch... Run. How we would launch attacks in the event that little, Iran does restart the program. Little rocket man enriched. caped. All right, an incredible video of the day next.